Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much, have a great day. Hello, this is Michael Trabens, our resetter here to congratulate you on your purchase of your Flagstaff Superlight 26 FKBS travel trailer. I'm here to show you around it, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at your campsite. First thing I want you to take into consideration are your slides. You got some pretty deep slides over here, so you get a good eye for how much room you're going to need for those to come in and out unhindered. Preferably nothing hanging over top of them. And I want you to think about where your water and power hookups are going to be. Your power is going to be on your off campsite rear. And your water is going to be on your campsite rear. So park accordingly so that you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. First thing you're going to do, after unhooking your hitch work, is get your unit level. Now, I do recommend getting a level. Sticking it on the side of your unit, in the middle of your unit, on your off-camp side, wherever that may be. Have someone watch that while you lower or raise the unit. You have a docking light that comes on this. And should you need, there's a manual override underneath this rubber stopper right here for this hand crank. So you can get it off your hitch or get it, get it level should you lose power. Speaking of power, check your battery terminals. Make sure they haven't wiggled loose as you're bouncing this down the road. Once you get your unit level, next thing you're going to do is stabilize it. You have power stabilizers with this unit. Before bringing them down, I do want to mention jack pads. Jack pads are going to protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt, debris, hot blacktop, keep them from sinking, better distribute the weight. Great investment. Use your 10% off coupon and go ahead and grab them. Now you notice sometimes these are run down at the same time and sometimes separately. You may, this is kind of loose, you may have to adjust your feet when they're coming down. Normally if they're not loose like that, they'll come right down for you. Now remember, these are stabilizing jacks, not leveling jacks. You've already got unit level. So once you feel that both sides are down and you're stable, that's as far as you want to bring them. Remember, just bring them down taut. You have the same thing at the rear of the unit. Your button's right there at the off camp side. Excuse me, on your camp side. Come back here and bring these down. Once you've got your unit level, stable, we're gonna go ahead and hook up our power and water. Now you do have this 50 amp service that comes out of the back. Should you need it, there's a 50 to 30 dog bone. And if you want to, there's a 30 amp down to 110 if you need to plug in at home. Got your power. Now let's hook our water up. Real simple. City water connection. First and foremost, your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in the unit. Always use this when putting fluid into your unit here. Hook up your city water connect. Hook up the hose, but don't turn it on yet. Let's go up to your hot water heater. At the front campsite of your unit is your hot water heater. All we're doing at this point is returning our drain plug. Get that in there nice and snug and then you can go ahead and turn your hose on. After your hose has been on for a while, go inside and turn on your hot water tap. Hot water's not gonna come out yet, but once water comes out of there, you know your hot water heater is full and you can turn it on from indoors. There is an on off element down here. It is set to off. Keep it off unless you're plugged into 110. If you're plugged into 110, 
turn this electric element on and then go ahead and turn on your hot water heater indoors. Should your hot water heater not be working? A couple reset bulbs here. If it's bulbed out, just push it back in for a reset. Let's say we're going camping and we're not gonna use city water. We're gonna use potable water. We're gonna come right back here to the rear of the unit. Here at the rear of the campsite is your potable water. Simply fill this up with a hose. Two ways to tell when it's full. There's an overflow valve here. Or on the inside where you check your tanks. Press the button for your freshwater tanks and that'll tell you when it's full. Just remember, when you use your potable water is when you want to use your water pump. Don't use your water pump if you're hooked up to city water, it's already pressurized. All right, we've got our power and water hooked up. Let me go ahead and walk you around the unit and show you a few other things. Outdoor shower here, your rear stabilizing jacks. For that potable water, there's the drain for that. There's a hand crank hole here for a manual override for your slide. There's a crank inside the storage. 110 and cable and TV hookup. This is a lip for your grill. And The quick connect there. No, that's for your table. Here's your grill. Grill up here, quick connect LP here, and your main low point drain when we're leaving the campsite. This is your furnace heat release. If you're running your furnace, steer clear of that, it'll get rather hot. That is a vent for your microwave, your outdoor speakers, and I'll run your awning out. Again, your hot water heater, your storage. There's your hand crank for your override for your slides, your hitch work. Looks like you're getting a backup camera. Great investment. This is wired for solar too. You can plug in a solar panel here and trickle charge your batteries. Cover for your propane tank. Speaking of propane, regulators simply point it toward the tank you wish to be using. Open this up, green when it's full. Power tongue jack. Again, your batteries. A docking light. Come back here between your slides. Be able to access this better when we're leaving and the slides are closed. Here's your dump station for your black and gray tanks. More storage here. There's your griddle and uh, stand that it sets on. And your power. And your backup camera. Your ladder, go up and check your seams. Caulk as needed. Recommend going up twice a year. Again, if you're coming in at night, you have a docking light here. This is your tank flush. We'll talk about that when leaving the campsite. This is your antifreeze inlet. And your cable and satellite. It all covers everything on the outside. Go take a look on the inside. Coming inside. First and foremost, fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows that the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway in case of an emergency. Control panel as soon as you walk into the right. Starting at the top, TPMS system. I will send you a separate video about the tire pressure monitoring system. It looks like they have a demo on here as well. And you can control this whole RV, slides, awnings, all the lights on an, RV, on an app on Google Play. Starting here, battery, fresh water, that's one I said you can hold when you're filling your potable water. Black and two gray tanks. Here's your two slides, your awning. I'll run that out, I want to talk about the rest of this. There's your water pump, turn that on when using potable water. Your tank heaters if in inclement weather. Oh, water heater if you're hooked up to gas, and over here you turn on your water heater if you're hooked up to electric. Got your awning going out. Just want to show you, you only want to run that out until that flap falls down to 90 degrees and you can see that brown bar. So how far you want to run them out? Hit the retract, comes back in rather quickly. To the left of that is your thermostat. Just hit mode to change them. We will start 
I turn the air on. Here's your air. Change the system to, oops, get back to heat. Heat. Your AC will shut off quick. There's your furnace. Now you notice when you shut your furnace off, it may take a minute or two. All right, got you on him back in. Let's go ahead and walk through the unit. Little safety latch on your Magic Pool fridge for travel. There's your simple temperatures there, controllers. This is a uh, clip for your TV. Put, put, mount that onto the back of a little TV and you can put that TV outdoors. Not sure why it was in your freezer. Below your fridge is your access panel to your breaker box and fuses. Looks like you got a handful of 15s there, a five and a couple 30s. Have those with you when you go camping. Self-explanatory microwave, your light and fan for your stove. Glass top makes an excellent backsplash for your stove. You have a panel light. Simply turn on your gas, hit your spark, and there's your flame. Same thing on the oven. Turn on your oven over here and light it from here with this spark. You can change that front panel light to a oven light. A lot of individual lighting in here. The TPS system, I will send you a video directly from them, from TST, on your tire pressure monitoring system. Down here at the left of the bottom of your dinette here is your 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector. See how much longer it took the furnace to shut off. Reason I mention this is 12 volt, it's always running off your battery. So if you're going to be gone for the day, nothing charging your battery, use your battery disconnect. Keep that from running your battery down. Your table, simply fold down, pull this to the side, and pull it, it comes down. Set it on here for a table. Bring this back cushions up, that'll give you another bed. You do have your recliner, just pull up on this handle here. Over here's your television. Turn that on for you. Premier site for every asset on TV and more. Go to ontvreview.com. Wow. Surprised it's even picking up anything in, in the indoors here. Your sound system. Remote for that. So three different zones on your speakers. Go through those and see where all those are at. The Bluetooth. Fireplace, even a remote for that. They make remotes for everything. So they're not just for looks anymore. Turn that heat on when it's cold in the morning or evening. Instead of using up your gas, use our electric to warm it up in here. This will get it toasty in no time. On the ceiling, your smoke alarm, your AC with quick dump, and a hand crank open vent for up here. Come back in your bathroom, turn on some lighting. Anything I want to mention in here is this is where your 110 with GFCI resets at. And maintain your plumbing. Back behind this panel is your plumbing for your sink. Just keep an eye on it now and then, make sure it's still connected well to the right when I walk in here your bedroom has a lot of this individual lighting for these lights here touch it once for blue hold your finger in for a nice reading light just your steps I'll show you how to bring them down when I bring the other ones up and this is your inverter panel just shows the power that you're using how much power is going to be on your battery still? In the bathroom, you do have a hand crank open. Power vent here. Get that off. It about covers everything on the inside. So what I'd like to do, 
Shut off all the lights. Make sure these doors are secure for travel. Shut all the lights off when you come through. Shower door as well. Secure that. Close your bathroom door. Secure your remotes in a safe place. Just buckle everything down. Those your griddle. I'll find a bigger spot for that one. Set that in there. Now I come over to my control panel and shut off the interior lights. Then I can see any more individual lights I need to shut off. In this case, it's over the stove. Turn my interior lights back on. Bring slide number one in. Make sure your cabinet doors are closed. Make sure nothing is in the way to impede your slide from coming in. Same thing back in the bedroom. Make sure that everything is out of the way. Nothing is on the floor, no luggage, no clothing, any simple thing can stop this from coming in. And we don't want to ruin things just for bringing our slides in. Hope you heard that little grinding noise. It's actually nothing grinding. It is your slide telling itself not to go any further. Sometimes you hear it going out as well. And don't worry about hearing it for just a second or two. Still hear your rear slide going in. Shut off our interior lights. Come out of the unit, you want to make sure this door is all the way open. Lift up your door, which you see is on hydraulics and lifts up almost by itself. Lock and deadbolt your unit. Lift and turn your handle. Come to your low point drain. If we're hooked up to city water, open both those up. Come to your hot water heater. Lift up on this pressure release valve. Let that stay up like that until this drains completely. Remember to put it back down or your exterior door will not close. Then you can pull your drain plug. And remember to lock that back in. Come around bring up all of our stabilizing jacks. Come to the rear of the unit. Unhook our water. Unhook our cable. Unhook our power and head on up to the dump station. At the dump station, everything's conveniently in one area here. Take this 10-foot sewage hose, comes to your convenience pack, hook that up, pull your right handle. That's going to be your black tank. Let that pull and drain until it sounds like it's no longer draining. Then you're going to come over here by leaving your black tank open. Take your water pressure regulator again and hook up to your black tank flush. Hook up the hose, let that run for a good five minutes. That's gonna wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. Shut your hose off, come back around, close your black handle, and pull your gray handle. Your gray handle is gonna be your cleaner waters, your sinks and your showers. Clean your sewage hose out for you a little bit. And you're gonna come up here to gray tank number two. Now you can buy a Y a bigger longer uh, sewage hose where you don't have to unhook both these but be sure to dump this one last it's gonna clean your sewage hose out for you you can go ahead and store it away and head on home again thank you for your purchase hope you enjoy this trailer for many years to come happy camping